All right, you guys, Sylvia here, and I am in the desert of Southern California. I am preparing for a very big trike tour, and today I want to talk about what I'm going to bring for cooking. Come on, Myrtle. Let's go. All right, you guys, so first of all, we need to have a little bit of a discussion about why you would bring camping gear. For a lot of people, this is very controversial. They would never, ever bring any cooking gear. And I have to say for most of my tours, I do not bring cooking gear. The only time that I'm gonna be bringing cooking gear is if I'm gonna be camping. And there are two big expenses when you are touring. The biggest one is accommodation, and the second one is food. In the United States, for me, I have a pretty tight budget. I cannot stay at hotels. I know for a lot of people, they will prefer to do credit card touring, and it sure is nice to be able to just stay in a hotel every night, have a nice comfortable bed, a shower. If you have electric assist, you know you have electricity and a safe place to keep your bike or trike right in the room with you. But for this tour, this one is probably nine months, 9,000 miles, and it's just far too expensive for me to stay in a hotel. So I'm gonna have to camp and I will be cooking. This is not the first time that I've done a tour in the United States where I have brought cooking gear. So I really do know how to cook on the road and what I like to eat. Some people really feel that a calorie is a calorie. They're happy to live on cliff bars. And I really feel like there's no right or wrong way. It's really up to you and what is it that you like to eat? How do you like to cook? Some people would never ever even consider cooking and uh, clearly I enjoy cooking and I'm a little bit particular about what I eat. Although I will say that it's, I'm very lucky that I can eat very simply. I can eat the same thing every day. I can wear the same thing every day. And as long as I like the taste, it's fine. Let me kind of talk to you about the cooking gear that I'm gonna be bringing. So for this tour, I have upgraded to, I don't know if it's really an upgrade, but I have bought into the Jetboil cooking system and they made a lot of improvements a number of years ago. I just thought it was big and bulky and just didn't really seem to be very efficient, but they have really upped their game and this is, it's a very, very nice system. So it comes with a, it's kind of like to protect the bottom, which is the where the cooking element is, but it's also a bowl. And then uh, it comes with a lid and it has some feet. If you are gonna be cooking on uneven surfaces, you can put them, put the feet under the canister to give you a, a little bit more of uh, stability. And so this has the stove, this is the stove and it fits on and it just screws on. And then this is a canister system, so you have to buy canisters for it. These canisters are actually made by Jetboil, but lots of different companies make them. You can find them pretty easily at sporting goods stores. Um, and you, as you put it on, you'll hear the gas, you'll hear that it's connected, and then um, it's ready to go. So you just turn, turn this until you hear it. You actually have to turn it quite a few times and then there's an ignition and then that's all it takes and you are ready to start cooking. This pot is a liter and so I use it to boil my water first thing in the morning for coffee and then once I have my coffee made I will use the rest of the hot water to make oatmeal. But you could easily cook up half a dozen eggs, boil them up. I kind of like having eggs as a snack. So that's uh, what I'm gonna be using for mostly boiling up water. I don't need a bowl. I can eat right out of the pot. If you are with somebody else, then you might wanna share the food and you could use this. Now, um, the other part that I'm gonna show you, so the pot comes off and there's this little addition here. It just slips right on on there you go and then i'm also bringing a pan um 
inside the pan. I like to use up all the different space. So I'll show you this in a second. So I have, uh, there's a spatula for cooking and then you need stuff to clean. So I have dishwashing soap and a small thing, a little piece of, of a sponge with a scrubby and then a couple of things just to wipe, uh, wipe things down. But this fits just right, right on here and it's really nice and secure. Now, my favorite thing to make for dinner is stir fry. I make that even when I'm not on the road. I don't really need a lot of different vegetables. I could, you know, do with some broccoli, maybe chopped up yam and some cooked sausage. These are things that are really easy to find. And then I have a piece of foil for a lid so that I can steam up the vegetables while they're cooking. And then here, is my pantry bag. You're probably wondering what these bags are. So these come from Ikea. They come in a four pack. They weigh nothing. The outside, it's all waterproof. They're really, just really great little bags. And they're only 10 inches high. My trailer is, is not very high and these bags fit in it perfectly. So I have one for cooking gear, then one for my pantry. I have another for my clothes and toiletries. And then the fourth one is for electronics. So I have two chargers for my electric assist. I have a battery bank that I'll use in the tent at night to charge up my phone, my Garmin, the Varia blinky thing on the back of my helmet and my AirPods. And so these, I have four of these little bags that I'm taking with me. Now this is my pantry and you know, the thing about cooking is even just to make a cup of coffee, it gets a little bit complicated. So um, I wouldn't be using this, but I would be using, you know, put it back onto the pot, fill it with water, heat it up, and then um, you obviously need coffee. And then I have a bag here for making drip. And so I have a cup and then a little collapsible coffee drip thing. And in it, I have little number two uh, filters. And so I can make a really good cup of coffee every day. Start your day off with a good cup of coffee is my motto. So that's that. And then for breakfast, I typically make oatmeal. So I'll make my coffee first and then I'll have some hot water left over and I'll make the oatmeal with the rest of the hot water. And then I will eat it right out of the bowl. If I have some berries, I'll add them. I also have uh, peanut butter in here. So I'll, if I, can't find anything, I'll probably put nuts or peanut butter in it, but I'll use uh, olive oil and soy sauce for my stir fry. And then maybe I want to have um, got peanut butter, uh, you know, maybe one day for my stir fry, I want to add some beans. So I have a can opener. And then if I have any leftovers, I keep a couple of little Tupperwares. Uh, it's kind of nice to have some leftovers for a snack on the road during the day. Um, I also have a very, very thin, lightweight cutting board. And again, I don't need a plate or a bowl because I'm just going to be eating out of the pot um, and directly out of the pan. What I will bring is real cutlery. I think I have it around here somewhere. Um, but I'm going to bring a fork and a spoon. And then in here, I have a knife. Now this bag, I've shown you guys this bag before. This is made by a company called Green Guru, and it's an insulated bag. It's like my little refrigerator. And so inside it's um, insulated. And what I will do is go to a convenience store or McDonald's, a place that has a soda fountain and an ice machine and I'll take a Ziploc baggie and I'll fill it up with ice and I'll put it in here. So anything that I want to keep cooler, I'm never going to have anything that really needs to be refrigerated, but you know, you don't really want to be eating wilted, you know, vegetables either. And so I'll put that in here. And what I did with this bag is I added a grommet 
so that as the ice melts, it has a place to drain. And this way your, your vegetables or whatever it is you keep in this bag aren't swimming in melted water. So these canisters, you can get them at a lot of sporting goods stores. You can also get them at Walmart and you can order them online a week in advance. And so you don't have to go to Walmart, wonder if they have it on the shelf. You can actually order it for pickup, pay for it online. This big canister, I will get 10 meals out of this. And then when it's done, I have five meals. So I'll have five meals before I need to replace my canisters. And you know, Walmart's pretty much everywhere and I can place an order and it'll be ready for pickup. If you can't get there within a week, they will refund your money and they will put it back on the shelf. Chances are it'll still be there if you can't make it within a week. Yeah, so that's all the stuff that I wanted to show you guys. What I'm going to be bringing for cooking while I am on tour. And again, this is not the, the first time that I have done this. So I feel very, very comfortable with it. It, you know, it is definitely something that you want to practice before you go out on tour. Like I have used this stove and pot and pan, you know, in my trailer, made some meals, made sure that I have everything that I need and then I'm comfortable with it. So please let me know what you think. If you get anything out of this, maybe it just gives you ideas for how you would want to cook uh, and cook on the road, what kind of food you would want to bring. Again, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. I think it's just really important to know what is comfortable for you. A lot of people would not be comfortable bringing any kind of cooking gear, cooking at all. And you know what, they'll just get all their meals on the road and that's totally another way to do it. Um, I wanna save some money. I wanna have more control over my diet. And so that's why I prefer to bring my own cooking gear and cook for myself. So yeah, let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Stay safe, be healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.